Okay, like, here we go. Cheers, bro. All right, let's get All back right. to it, bro. Season two. We're live. First episode, Belmont Stakes Day, Saturday, June 5th. We are ready to go. 13 races, nine stakes race. We cannot be more excited to be back with you guys and providing you a different aspect this year from the final furlong. We're coming at Thanks. you from our Twitter page. Go! Videos, videos, updates, tweets, live race by race payouts. We are with you guys more than ever this year, and we are super excited about it. RJ, talk to me, man. What's up? How you doing? How you living? How you feeling? I'm good. About a year ago, uh, we, we we started this, right? How many how many articles did we do last year? We did like uh, mo- more than ten, obviously. So I think it was about fourteen to sixteen around there. Can't honestly can't pinpoint it. That's crazy, <laughs> bro. But you know the world's going back to normal a little bit, which is nice. Getting to watch baseball. I went to my first baseball game yesterday. I went to a playoff hockey game. The world's going back to normal. We got our sports on deck. But we got to remember, you know, last year I was sitting in the same chair and you gave me a call. We were talking and we were, you know, we were texting all that stuff. And we were, t- you know, we were talking about like there's nothing on but the, but horse racing right now. Yeah. So, you know, we took we took advantage of that. We started doing some, you know, doing some horse racing and horse racing kind of uh, it kind of shot to the top. Right. As we started, as we started, you know, you you've had a deeper love than it than I do. But, you know, as as soon as we started at doing this more and more, it started coming to the forefront. And now, you know, now we got a, now we got some some leverage behind this and, and we want to we want to keep going. So tell me about Belmont. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, man, I couldn't have said any of that better myself. Like you said, a year ago, we were we were sitting around, not much to do. And, you know, the only sport was horse racing. And it was cool as somebody like me, you know, I've been going, thank, thankfully, you know, to my, my dad, I've been going to Saratoga race course since I was probably four years old, you know, that I can remember, maybe six that I can remember, you know, so I've, I've, it's local. I've, I've always had a love for it. You know, it's, it's one of those places where, especially Saratoga, you're so close to the jockeys, the horses, the trainers, you can see everything, everything. It's, it's not like a baseball game where you got to pay, you know, nine hundred dollars to sit a hand reach away from Francisco Lindor or Aaron Judge. You know, it's it's one of those things that you know you see it on TV, especially locally, and and you see you know the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, the Belmont. You see all the big names on the big stage, but then when you go to a place like Saratoga or Belmont, they're right there, man. And and it's not it, they're not hard to access. It, it's one of the coolest things about professional sports. And, you know, I think um, I think with the whole Baffert situation, Kentucky Derby, you know, gets gets the spotlight, gets the major news. And one thing that I want to talk about before we kind of dive in here is, um, you know, I read took a bad spill yesterday and, uh, you know, he took a bad spill in an allowance race where, you know, he was on a horse that was five to one. He was clear for the lead. It was clear of its tables. It looked like one of those wins where you you look at the board and you're like, man, how didn't I have I at five to one? You know, one and of those then, races. How did I not have I read at five to one might be might be the the overall sentiment of every race fan in, in the world. Yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. And that was, you know, it was a wild race. So the horse is clear. Horse takes a bad step. I read stumbles. He's got 12 stitches in his head, six in his arm. He's out for two weeks. So so that, you know, immediately throws a wrench into everything going to tomorrow. And, and the thing that was funny to me was that, you know, when the whole Baffert situation happened, there was literal breaking news on ESPN sports center hourly talking about the whole situation. And, and today, you know what we got, we got a little bar at the bottom of the screen. And, and I say today, as we're shooting this on Friday, we shoot all our videos on Friday for Saturday. So today we got a little, little blurb on the bottom of the screen that says, I read Ortiz is out of the Belmont stakes. That's it. Not that he's, Hurt and out for two weeks, but the LeBron James of horse racing is out for two weeks. And all they can say is for one race. And that, that to me is that speaks where we're at right now. We're at normalcy. We're back to where horse racing doesn't matter to the average Joe, because we got NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, MLB in full swing. I mean, it's a great time to be a sports fan. 
don't get me wrong. I'm extremely excited to be back from where we were a year ago, but to be back with horse racing, man, it's always special. It's always special at this time of the year. It's always special in New York. It's always special in the summertime. It's just one of those things where horse racing in the summer in New York is summer. It's, it's, the, it, it's like baseball was, in summertime by Kenny Chesney. It's just a thing that goes like, you know, hand in hand. Yeah, dude, I was talking to my dad today. He kept saying August place to be Saratoga, August place to be Saratoga. You know what I mean? That's the name it's got. Absolutely. And, and for so many reasons. But like you said, the LeBron James of uh, of horse racing is out, just like LeBron James out of the playoffs. <laughs> the, the basketball playoffs wide open. Tomorrow at Belmont, we got 13 races, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stakes races, eight grade one stakes races, which means some serious cash is up for grab. We got some wide open races, though. We have some wide open races, and that's a perfect segue to it is because before we dive into it, I just want to let it be known that. All of our information comes from DRF, Daily Racing Format, DRF.com. They are the best in the game. If you want to play horse racing, DRF, DRF Bets, Daily Racing Form.com. However you access it, that is the way to go, man. There is. And if you're in New York, NairaBets.com, that's also another great aspect to use. They got an app. They got the website. Everything's super easy to navigate. It makes betting as a horse fan easy and that that's the most important part but before we get into that the changes that are going to come tomorrow will come from our twitter account okay our twitter account final furlong we're launching it the video will be there we're going to be with you guys tomorrow from 11 30 to about 7 30 8 o'clock at night because of the you know the 13 races we're going to be with you guys live posting results posting changes right now we don't have access because Todd Pletcher and a lot of other trainers and owners came out today and said that they wouldn't make changes to IRAT's mounts until tomorrow. So we won't know who's riding who until tomorrow. And that's, you know, that's, that's horse racing. That's the way it goes. We're playing based on daily racing form, the horses past performances and what RJ and myself believe to be the best. So without further ado, RJ, you want to start a race. You want me to start a race one? Yeah, go ahead. Rip through race one and two. Okay, so my favorite, and you know this, my favorite races, dirt, five and a half furlongs. That that means we got a sprint. And you know I love the sprints. I love the fast races. I think it shows the quicker horses. I think it shows the most aggressive jockeys. And that's what I love about horse racing. I love the aggressive jockeys. I love guys like Irad Ortiz, but he's not going to be on a mount tomorrow. And I got... 4387. I got the winner being wit was written by Irad Ortiz, but we'll see where that goes. And for you, you got 3156. You're liking Hagler. Why don't you tell me about Hagler a little bit? So Hagler's a little interesting. I landed on Hagler. You know, it's tough because he's a nine to five. And, and if you have followed Final Furlong, man, you can check out buy my t shirt. No, Final no, no. Furlong. You gotta you gotta get up. You gotta show the merch, baby. Did you pick up the chalk, man. We 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 pick up the chalk. If there's a horse, we don't care if he's nine to five, seven to five, eight to five. There's money to be made. Okay. Whether you're playing doubles, singles, you got some money to spend. Listen, this is a game where you got to spend money to make money. And there's a lot of people religiously old to new. That's the way you got to live. So for me, Hagler, nine to five, he recently raced, came in second. Who rode him? I read. Well, I read hopped off with him for wit. So that to me was interesting right off the bat because that tells me that Irad feels as though Wit under Todd Pletcher is a better horse than the three for Rudy Rodriguez. But Rudy Rodriguez, Jose Lescano, interesting, interesting. I like that nine to five because I still think there's money to be made there. I love, I love the four, three double. That right there is perfect. Three, four. The three, three four, four double. Three, four, double. I think it's beautiful. I think that's something to be hit right there. I think it may come down to the wire. Maybe. I think Hagler's got some chances because it's already raced before. It's got a race under its belt where Wit doesn't. It's a newcomer. But who knows? And 
you know, I think it's a wide open race with Irad not there anymore, but we'll see. And, you know, let me, let me jump in here because you said a three, four double. So a lot of people are going to look at our picks and say, okay, race one, Dylan has the three, RJ has the four race two, Dylan has the eight, RJ has the five. Let me tell you something right here. A three, four double is interesting because it doesn't cost a lot of money and you get the three horse. Okay. Hagler, Jose Lizcano. Yes. Morning line favorite. But if you look in the second race, okay, the second race is a maiden special again. And the four is my great with junior Alvarado. You get Billy Ma. That's a great, that's a very well placed double. So if you're doing for all you, you know, dollar, $2, $3 fans, you do a $2 double tomorrow in the first two races three, four, there's a chance that that hits and it pays very well. So that's, that's, that's what we here at the final furlong are trying to provide everybody is a sense of payment. We're trying to give you a sense of where we come wagering wise. Yes, sure. We like this horse. We like that horse because we know how to read programs, but we're giving you value. We're giving you what we believe is to most to make on your dollar. I like I like even a boxed exacta between three, four tomorrow. I think that that, that in could, the first race in the first race, that could be a way to go. Hagler wit. They're running beside each other. Maybe one gets the best of the other, but I, let's agree. I like, I like real quick before we move on to race two, cause I know we got a lot of races to cover, but just like you like three, four, I like three, four, one. I think the three, four, one triple keep, keep calm, carry on Todd Pletcher, Johnny V man. Johnny V, those first-time starters, Johnny V knows what he's doing. And Johnny V at Todd Pletcher at less than six furlongs, dangerous. Yeah. Uh, tell You like this? You like this? I know you like this uh, 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 My Rosie at 30 to 1 here by Brian Hernandez. I know you're a little you're a little on the iffy because Brian Hernandez is riding the horse, but do you think he could clip a show here maybe? Maybe clip, clip a show because pace, a place is going to be tough for this horse. But so, you know, you, maybe, maybe you know, that back end, you thinking, you know, where I landed, honestly, with my Rosie, I landed on my Rosie because it, it's obviously as you, my boy, you know, that's my sister's name. I landed on a personal preference. Brian Hernandez, he does have a particular past of bringing in some horses in the exotic. So trifectas, 50 cent trifectas, dollar trifectas, 10 cent supers, 25 cent supers. He brings in some horses in third or fourth where you're like, whoa, hey, now you look down. That horse was 30 to one, 20 to one, 15 to one. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, yeah, I couldn't make a ticket tomorrow in the first race without including the five, whether it runs or not. Mm -hmm. Why don't you talk to us a little bit now about race two? Okay, race two, we got a seven furlong, but we got it on the turf. 90k up for grabs. It's a nice, it's a nice race. I went here eight, seven, six, ten. You race two. You won't no, sorry. You race two. You went eight, seven, six, ten. I went five, six, seven, one. I like the 15 to one Charleston strong. I'm really liking it. We got Luis Saez on the jockey. It's a beautiful, beautiful horse. How many times have I said it? Damn, Luis Saez 12 to 1. Should have hit that one. That was easy. And, 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 you know, he stays like that. You like Joel Rosario on the eight, Ranger Fox. Why don't you tell me more about Ranger Fox? So, for me, you know, a, a horse that was interesting for both of us in this race is the seven that I want to talk about first, King James. Now, providing nothing changes and Jose rides King James for James Jerkins, this horse is dangerous, okay? It, this seven horse at four to one is dangerous, man. I, I don't know why, but I got a feeling he's going to have something to say at the end result. And, you know, for me, okay, I look at the eight. Why do I like the eight the best? Ranger Fox, because Joel Rosario, you know, John, John Terranova, very good horse and trainer combination. But if you look at his past couple races here, he's, he came in second and fifth, okay? But he came in fifth. At a maiden special weight at 80,000. Okay, so he raced at 90,000 in his last race. Came in second by a neck. Okay, this is a 90,000. We're asking it again. And what we're asking this time against this company is come and catch me. Okay, because the eight has an early buyer speed rating of 104. Mm -hmm. So when this, when the gate opens and these horses go, I expect. 
Joel Rosario and Ranger Fox to say, come and catch me. And I think the seven might do it. I got the eight, but I, I the seven is interesting. He is interesting. The thing I the thing I like about five and Charleston Strong, Luis Saez, is if you got a trifecta, if you got an exacta, it's a perfect horse, especially for these maiden races. A lot of these horses are gonna be trying to catch Ranger Fox. Luis Saez ain't gonna do it. He's gonna be smart. He's going to be smart. He's going to keep himself at the four, keep himself at the five. But then when we hit that corner, horses start getting tired. Charleston Strong is going to start catching up. So he could clip exacta. He could clip a trifecta. I like him here at 15 to one. I think that's a lot of money to be made in a, in a race that's got a three to one. I like King James at the four to one. I love Jose at four to one. It's like, you know, they talk about the Lord saves. The Lord saves and Jose Ortiz cash is four to one. So you got to be careful there with him. And I love Joel Rosario's on that one. I know you love Joel Rosario with the big lead. So he gets that big lead. Everybody's going to become catching him, except I think Luis Sai is going to be smart. He's going to ride that 15 to one. Well, so this race too, you know, it's not a stakes race, but we got these up and comers. We got guys, you know, day out of the office came from these maiden races. You know, these are where these are these Moretti, Belmont. Moretti that we're going to see in a couple races here came out of a maiden race, blew the world by storm on a fucking stakes race, man. I'm telling you. These I are where the races think, come out. This is, this is, this is as good as they come. So we're excited for race two. I think you, I think you could, you didn't say it any better, man. Like this was, this was perfect. You, there, there was no way that you could have worded it other than the fact that there's a great chance for a bomber to come in second or third here. You, you, the first two races is where you're looking to make money, okay? And then when you start to turn and you're looking at, all right, so race three starts to stretch of all graded races. So now you're talking about horses. You're talking about pedigree. You're talking about diving into the actual PPs. Those first two races, you're playing names. You're playing jockeys. You're playing trainers. You're playing odds. You're playing things that you trust. So I think that this Saturday is, is a perfect mix between races one and two and then 12 and 13 because 12 and 13 are just like one and two, you know, you look at them and you're like, all right, well, this might not be a race that I think is much is very important, but at the same time, those are the races that you make money. In, yeah. All right. So here we go, man. Here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to give you the $400,000 grade one Woody Stevens in race three. We're starting off, man. This is, this is it. Here we go. I got three, four, one, six. My top pick being the three. I'm going with Jackie's Warrior. That's my best bet of the day. RJ's rolling with the 4361, his top pick being the four Dream Shake. RJ, why don't you talk to me a little bit about Dream Shake? I like Flavian Pratt in big races. And you know I'm I'm a jockey first. I in any sports, I'm a jo- I'm a I'm an athlete first. So those jockeys to me, they they count. And the fourth, I like the four, three exacta. I love boxing in Joel and Flavian because once again, going to have to catch up to Joe Rosario. I think Flavian may be able to do it. It's going to be tough because Jackie's warrior is a good horse, but dream shake. It's got a great late pace. It's got that great late pace and, and, and everything, everything in stakes races comes down to how you hit Man, what's the word for it? Final furlong. How do you hit <laughs> that last end, right? How you hit that last sure. end. And I think Dream Shake is one of the only horses in this race that's going to be able to, to put it into gear at that last moment. And that's why I picked the four. But, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with the three here. Jackie's Warrior is, is, is a really good horse. And, and Joel Rosario's riding. It's your best bet. So tell me so- about it, baby. You know, with Jackie's Warrior for me, and the reason why I think I landed on this horse as my best bet of the 13 race card is is because at the end of the day, you know, I've watched Belmont, especially now for a couple of weeks here, and it's playing very strong to early speed. And if you look at, again, daily racing form, shout out DRF, man, they do what they do. If you look at Jackie's Warrior, she's got an early bit of 116. In this field, in this field, that's tough. The next closest is the two. Drain your clock. Drain the clock. With Irad and uh, Safi Joseph Jr. 
But now, as much as I love Safi Joseph, we don't know who's riding this horse tomorrow. We don't know. Last time ridden out by Irad in the Bay Shore, grade three, stepping up. This is a grade three to a grade one, man. You know, you, you, you get down to the nitty gritty here. And I just think that at the end of the day, going this distance, seven furlongs, if they break clean, every, Joel Rosario is saying, come and get me. Come and get me. And he's on a horse that has proven that come and get me is pretty hard. Now, his last time out in the grade two, Pat Day Mile, he beat Dream Shake by a head. So this is interesting. This is a big, this is a big race between the three and the four. This is a fun early stakes race that we get to see two horses that are very, very strong. So for me, I like a three, four exacta, but I love, I love, I love, I love a three, four, one triple. Why? Because I think Junior Alvarado and Billy Ma are going to make the money. That's a, that's a horse for me. I think is very sneaky is this one Nova rags. Dude, that horn, you know, that horn, dude, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was going to say. That Junior Alvarado, we both have a 4-3-1-6 or 4-3-6-1 Superfecta. And that's what I'm hitting here. I'm hitting that Superfecta, that 4-3-1-6. So whatever falls, we'll have there. Or a 4-3-1-6 Trifecta, and I'll pay the extra money for the odd man out. It doesn't matter here, but I think you got four horses here that are your top contenders, that 4-3, that 1, and that 6. So that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with, baby. Let's Absolutely. let's jump. Let's jump to grade and four. Are you ready? Or race quick, four? Are you ready? Before, before we jump into race four, I do want to go ahead and, and, and let everybody else know. You know, everybody watching this, everybody following along, we are going to be posting on our Twitter page. You know, uh, pick fours, pick five, pick sixes. I love those. I'm in pick threes, pick fours all day long. So I like the spread. I like to do a hundred dollar pick four ticket. And, you know, you spread across four races, but you get some bombers. You get some value, man. There's there's tickets to win in New York racing. I cannot stress enough to you as the people watching, there is money to win in New York racing. So let's get into it, man. Here we go. Race four, $400,000 grade two Brooklyn Stakes going a mile and a half on the dirt. RJ, tell me why you like the three, buddy. I like campaign because, you know me, a Lewis Saez 12 to one that that screams that screams a winner or uh, or maybe a placer, but it's going to end up in that final three. You know that Luis Saez on a 12 to one. It's it's got a great late pace that ru that runs right into Lewis's wheelhouse. I'm thinking the three here could win you some money. But I also like the six as well, and you like the six as well. Am I, am I correct here? You like Moretti, right? I mean, that's a good horse. That's a winning horse. I'm going with the three campaign as a little bit of a bomber, but I ain't forgetting about that six. And tell me why you got him as your winner here. You know, Moretti almost, he almost got my best bet stand. He almost did because Moretti's a type of horse. You know, there was a lot of people. If you, you know, if you look back last year, and you see some of the races he raced in, you, you, it doesn't, a lot of it doesn't make sense. Okay. But then he raced in the flat out stakes at Belmont last year on June 11th. So almost a year, you know, a year and a little under a year to the date in the flat out stakes. And he rocked in the slot. Now Belmont's a tough racetrack to, to be out in front and to go in. He did it in the slot. Okay, he turned around in the Suburban, grade two at Belmont, came in second. Who did he came, come in second to? Tacitus, a very, very, very good horse. Okay, what did he do so far here? August, Saratoga, comes out in the Birdstone, another stakes race. Crushes it, beats your to blame and rocketry, who now, if I'm not mistaken, both horses are in this race. So when I look at the paper, I see a horse that loves this track, loves this distance, and has beaten two horses that are pretty good in this race. So for me, when I look at it now, again, this is, this is one of those races we talked about earlier on right now, DRF, everybody, uh, Equibase, capital OTB, 
Naira bets, whatever you want to look at for tomorrow's card, has Irad Ortiz as the jockey on Heredi. Very interesting. Who is Todd Fletcher going to have? I got a feeling Javier Castellano might want to ride this horse tomorrow. He might want to ride this horse. I agree. There's a chance, and if he does, not only just him, but I think anybody who rides this horse is going to win tomorrow. But if Javi's on him, I think he's going to get the ride he needs at a mile and a half, and he's going to have something to say about the winner at the end of this. So me personally, I really like Moretti here. I think this is the race. This is his almost almost like it was last year in the slop, but it wasn't as big of a race, but this is his come out race. When he won in the slop last year, everybody looked around and said, wow, this horse is good for Pletcher. I think this is the year that people say this horse is a champion for Pletcher. I like Moretti because it's a winner horse. Last year, it couldn't be stopped. The first two races, I think it won the first two, and then it, and it ended up three out of three out of its first four winners in stakes races. This is a, a, a horse that's a proven winner. So I like Moretti. I'm going with Saez because of the money. At 12 to 1, I think it's good odds. Even if guys aren't picking this horse, they're saying maybe, you know, this horse ain't good enough. If we... It doesn't matter for Saez. Saez don't care about if the horse is good enough. It's if he can get it to run late. So that's the thing. If the three king run late, it could win, but it's a little bit of a bomb at 12 to one, but that's where the money's to meet. I like the six, three exact the box tomorrow, or even just a six, three up and down or three, six up and down. So I, I do like that box tomorrow. I, I like it. I like it as well. I like it as well. All right. So moving on, here we go. The, the, Race five here, Belmont Park, the one mile, grade one, Acorn. Big race here. We got for RJ, four, six, one, two, the four being his top pick. The four being day out of the office. RJ loves day out of the office. Before I let you talk about him, let me just say I like six, two, one, four. Okay, I do like search results. But again, when I made these picks, this was with IRAD Racing. Tell me why Johnny V and Timothy Ham and Day Out of the Office are the horse to be. Because it's a mile. Because John Velasquez is running a mile, and I think that's his sweet spot. That's his bread and butter. He likes this little race. I like him in this race because he, he, he knows how to get the best out of his. Search results would be my favorite. I think maybe my best bet would be search results at, at, at the six, but I read a Ortiz ain't racing. So I read Ortiz doesn't have, doesn't have a jockey tomorrow. I think it goes to John. I think John Velasquez stays in the four. I don't think he jumps over to six. I think he stays at the four. Right. But I like a trifecta, superfecta, six, four, three, one. But this is the thing. Day out of the office won at the Belmont last year. He won a graded race at the Belmont last year. He won at this mile last year. So, you know, earlier this year, he might have gotten run down, but she she's a beautiful horse. She's going to win. I, I like her as my best bet tomorrow because it it's, it's proven at Belmont it's a winner. And that's a big thing for me. A proven winner. I am a little squared at the five. Make mischief. Tyler Gaffleyon's always tough. He's always tough at a tw- and he's twenty to one. But I'm thinking day out of the office grabs it tomorrow. I'm thinking John Velasquez shows up. He knows it's time. He's got to win. I think he wins this one tomorrow. I'm not going to give you too much else. I think you you hit the nail on the head. Me personally, Johnny V is my favorite jockey. You know, I read. I love I read. But Johnny V, I grew up on him. That's my that's my jockey. Um, one horse I will give the public here, obligatory, the two, um, with Jose Ortiz and Billy Ma. This horse coming out of a very good grade two, uh, the Bells at Churchill Downs. Um, you know, he is stretching out, okay? So he's going from seven furlongs to a mile. But if you go back two races, okay, he ran a mile at Gulfstream Park. It was a maiden special weight. Yes, it was a 40,000, but it was a mile, and he won by two and a half lengths with Jose Ortiz. So my only thought here is he gets his distance that he might like. He gets his jockey that he might like, and he might be a price. So if you're looking for something here and, you know, you don't have the bankroll to play a horse to win or necessarily, a, a, you know, a, a, 
a double or anything like that, why don't you go ahead and you, you can box the four with the two and do yourself a nice favor, do a two, four exact a box for $5, cost you 10. And I think this is going to pay well, two, four. I really do. I, I, I really think it does because I think the four wins a race. I think the two's right behind him or vice versa. You know, if the two wins, he's not winning by more than a head. So I think that's a very good pick. And uh, we're on to the six, baby. We're on to the six. six. Tell me about the six. So, six race here. We got a $400,000 grade one jackpot. J pure stakes going six furlongs on the inner turf. Me personally, man, again, I made this pick. I like this race a lot. I picked the four fast boat. Irad Ortiz, Joe Sharp. I picked them because it was Irad on the turf. Irad on the turf, man, I love him. He, I, you know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to be the dead horse, pun intended, but I read on the turf, man, he knows how to hit the go button. He knows when to – He it, it's if you ever watch his races, and anybody that does knows what I'm talking about right now, is he sits so high. And it's like all the other horses are coming around the stretch, but I read's taller than everybody. And then all of a sudden he gets down real low at the top of the stretch, and his horse shoots like a dart. That's why I took fast boat, because I thought it was going to do that in race six. So my second choice was the six. I do think uh, I do think the six here, round r- bound for nowhere, Joel Rosario, Wesley Ward, probably going to be the favorite. I did like the four to beat him, but I think the six has a shot here. Let me, let me know what you think here. You, you, you and I, we differ pretty, pretty hard on this race. So let's hear it. Let's so hear I, like, I like, once again, I'm showing faith with Luis Saez. Early pace, not great, but the late pace is really good. Without Irad there, it's going to be interesting who's jumping to the pace because See, I, I think, think Joel, gotta, I think I think Joel Rosario quick. jumps to the pace, but I don't think his – I don't think it's as good as Fast Boat. I think Fast Boat has the best – I, I don't know. Joel Rosario has a great horse. I think it's going to jump in early, but it's going to be – it's going to be who can who can sustain it the longest, right? Agreed. I think the seven secret rules is the horse that sets the pace. Mm-hmm. And I think I think but I, I think you're right. I think I'm splitting hairs because I agree. I think uh, I think the seven in the six, I think both of them break and they go. And at this distance. Like you were saying. It, the agree. thing the thing the thing is, man. The, uh, no, Irad throws such a wrench into everybody's plans. Every because because you know you would know where the pace setter is, and right now the really you know jockeys are going to be aggressive tomorrow because they know that they don't, they're not going to have to deal with Irad. So it's going to be what what jockey tells themselves. Hey, maybe it's time to show up today, right? Maybe it maybe it's maybe it's time I put my foot down and I say you know. I'm the jockey tomorrow. I want to see. I want to see a jockey pull off three straight tomorrow. See if we can get an Irad special, the three, the three winners in a row, because that that'll set a that'll set a, a precedent. I, I think tomorrow is is a good place to show who who what what jockey thinks themselves as the part, because we got to get a chance tomorrow. I think because, that's a great point. I think that's a great point that you made. And, and you know, uh, you hear, especially, my, you know, us, both of us watching um, America's Day at the races on Fox Sports or anything like that. You hear analysts like um, Andy Sterling and a lot of, um, you know, Paula Duca and Maggie Wolfendale and Gabby Gaudet, Jonathan Kitchens. You hear a lot of these analysis and they and they talk about the IRAD effect. OK, so when a horse is getting over bet because he's got the best jockey on the planet. So it's going to be interesting to see what horses race to their potential and to see where the odds fall. So for me, right here in this race, one, one, I, this was a horse I circled. I circled right away. I do want to give it out. So if you look on the article, race six, I do have the 11th, the 11 dot stormy fourth. This is a horse that could win the race. Okay. Got stormy, Mark Cassie, Tyler Gaffleone, this 11 could win the race. I want to say it, it, right it would now, not be the first time that got stormy 
got stormy was put out to pasture they're like hey this horse ain't good it's a filler horse yada 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 comes back wins a race especially tomorrow we got a lot the the variables are very good for got stormy the variables it's almost like a perfect you know no pun intended with the name it's a perfect storm it's a perfect storm all of these variables come got stormy tyler gaffleon he's the jockey you gotta look out for in every race he's in because he might have a bomber he might have a close he might have a, a close odds at four to one five you know five to two nine to five maybe but he's always going to be in there he's always going to be in the middle he's always going to be in the dirt so you got to be careful for tyler gaffleon i know that you know that we got to make sure everybody knows that Tyler Gaffleone, he could cause a lot of problems. He could get stormy, bro. He could get stormy. All right. So now this is the race I've been waiting to talk about. Race seven. Okay. $500,000 grade one Ogden Phipps going a mile and a 16th on the dirt. The reason why I've been wanting to talk about this, because if Jackie's warrior was not racing today, Swiss Skydiver was my best bet. I love this horse. I've watched this horse. I believe in this horse, but caught a fever. Well, like all of us, some days we just, we don't want to go to work. Understandable. So for me, in this race, I got one, three, five, seven on paper in the article before we change anything. So I picked the Swiss Skydiver as my winner. Okay. That's going to get changed. My pick is going to be the five, okay? She dares the devil. Florent Giroux, Brad Cox. For me, in a race like this, Brad Cox, I trust him. I believe in him. And I don't really need much else because, you know, when I looked at this, honestly, when I looked at this on paper, I thought Swiss Skydiver was around. I thought this horse was going to win for fun. Just based on the field, I thought it was light, you know, Valiance, good horse. There's a couple, Latruska, good horse. Latruska, great horse with Irat. Take Irat off. I don't know who's riding that horse. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of questions here. So for me, she dares the devil, the five. I'm going to take a shot. I think Brad Cox has a very good Belmont Stakes Day, and that's who I'm rolling with. RJ, what do you think about the seven? So before Swiss Skydiver uh, was was eliminated, I think we both had we I actually had it in the dot in our in our uh, article as my best bet yesterday before you texted me today and told me that uh, she's not racing, which is which sucks because Swiss Skydiver that's a game horse, that's a horse that's gonna that's gonna win. If it if it's the top of if it's the top of its class, it's gonna win. It's a great horse. I thought it was a three-horse race with Swiss Skydiver. I think it's a two-horse race now with Latruska and She Dares the Devil. I think I, I think you can't go wrong here with a 3-5 exacta. I think that's the way that it goes. I love it's that. Gonna, it's going to be which horse can hold off the other horse because both of these horses love that early pace, but they're not great late. But I don't think it matters because I think they're the two best horses in the race. They're both winners. They're both stakes race competitors so it's going to be whether latruska she dares the devil which one can either follow in but also also here valiance i love that horse valiance i think that's got a great chance to run up late the two luis saez at four to one not great and getting great odds but now that swiss skydiver is out that's a horse you got to look for it'll come up behind i love a three five two uh trifecta i think you box it you put a, a little present on it you kiss it goodbye and you and you wait till it cashes because i love the three five two box trifecta there i like that i like that i'm with you there moving on to race eight five hundred thousand dollars grade one the longings just a game stakes going a oh mile on goodness. the turf oh my rj goodness. sits oh eight goodness. three ten twelve before I give, I, I got 411. Half 10, a nine. milli, half a milli on the line for I just the game. It's just a game, but it's just half a, a milli. 411, 10, 9. Now, before we get into this, I do want to give full disclosure that I personally thought this was the hardest race of the 13 race cards. I thought this race 
was fully loaded. My personal favorite is the 11 blowout. Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt, Peter Brandt, Great Britain on the turf. Those Great Britain, those Ireland horses, man, all they do is run on grass. We got a couple Great that, Britain horses in this race, bro. That's a It's a very interesting race. Why don't you tell me why you like the 8, 3, 10, 12? So I, I really like the eight because I like Mike Smith, right? I like – this is the thing about these foreign imports. It's going to be which horse decides to show up because it's a new race, right? It's a new area. So we got to see which, which winner can come up. But a lot, a lot of people are talking about Alisqua at the eight. It's a big horse. It's getting bet a lot. It's still got very good odds at eight to one, but Mike Smith, you know, he can handle a horse. And this, this is so, this, this, this race is so packed. I think one horse is going to have to get, get out. Right. And I think the eight here may be able to get out. He's got some good time form U S scores. He's got some, some great racing and, and this, this thing, it's a packed race, right? Like you said, you packed. couldn't. So honestly, picking the eight, kind of like throwing darts on a board, right? At this point, we're like, you know, hey, I don't think that a five to one is going to win here. I don't think that a three to two at, at, at you know, at, at post time is going to win here. I think it may be an eight to one. I think it may be Joel Rosario at the seven, at 20 to one. I think this is a wide open race. I like the eight because it's getting bet a lot by the insiders and it's still eight to one. So I just want to go ahead and give the uh, eight a shout out here because it's Godolphin stable. And I know my dad, he absolutely loves Godolphin stables. So for you to be on this horse, I'm definitely going to have this horse in my plays. Um, you know, originally looking at it, I did four, 11, 10, nine, but like, like we said, going into the race with a lot of changes coming. Um, this eight's going to be a horse that I play. So I, I think that a four, eight exacta is something that is, um, that could be very beneficial to a lot of our players. Um, I think if you are playing some exotics, you know, you're, you're playing a pick two, pick three at this time, you have to include the eight because Mike Smith and uh, Godolphin Sables, they, they're going to be in it. They're going to be in it. Despite the odds, they're going to be in it. Go ahead. Why don't you talk to me now about, the grade one, Hill and Dale, Met Mile. So, you know, we're picking winners here. Race nine. Obviously, I'm going with, with Nick's go. Because I'm, you know, New York bred, baby. We live in here. Nick's go is going to be the winner. I don't care. I don't care. You tell me that American Pharaoh's in this race. I'm picking, I'm picking Nick's go, right? So, it's a favorite. It won the Pegasus, won the Breeders, lost in Saudi Arabia. You know what? I'll forgive. I'll forgive Nick Sko for, for, for missing that. I think he'll get the lead and hold on. I'm not – Irad was supposed to write Mischievous Alex. Really, I don't think Mischievous Alex will do much for me. I'm not worried about not that. Without not without Irad. Not without Irad. I'm not worried about it. I think it makes Nick's go just that much bigger, but I think Nick's go gets that lead and holds on. I don't think anybody's catching up to Nick's go. And that's my thought on this Dr. Post game horse with Johnny Velasquez at the two, but Nick's go is my favorite. So it's a great race, man. This is a, a great, great race. This is it's a, a good race. great, even with Irad. All right. So mischievous Alex. Yeah. I had him as my third selection in this race. I thought he'd, he'd get a shot at the triple because I thought with Irad, he'd go, thought he'd be the, be the horse. The horse that I believe to be the best in this race is the three silver state. I think this horse, Ricardo Santana, Steve Asmussen, this is a horse, man. If you look at his last races, one, two, three, four, he's won five straight. Five straight against grade two, 500,000, 150,000. All right, so he's stepped up as he's progressed. 
Why is this horse important to me? Because he's gone from fifth to first, fourth to first, third to first, second to first, seventh to first. My thought is your boy, Nick's go, goes maybe a little too fast. Hey, that could happen, you know. Maybe a that little could too happen. fast. Hey, because look. I think Dr. Post pushes. I think the one mischievous Alex push, pushes at a 117 early buyer rating. Here's my here's my problem. Not not problem. I, I take that back. I like Nick's go. His buyer figure early is 130. So if he doesn't break well, he's playing catch up because he wants the lead. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm worried about. How does he break? If he breaks clean and goes, you know how I feel about Joel. You know how I feel about Brad Cox. This is a good horse. No, I uh... got this is one of those races where when you look up and you're like, all right, the quarter was 24. The half was 44. You, th- this, is a, this is one of those races you're going to be paying attention to what those clockers' numbers are as they get going on the back stretch. I think right. next go is a great race, a uh, great pick. And I also really firmly, absolutely believe that Silver State is going to have something to say. Yes, 100%. I 100% agree with you there. Silver State is a game horse. It, uh, I mean, every. I, I think there's going to be more down to wire, like down to the wire races tomorrow than maybe we've seen in a long in time. A long time. Because there's going to be a lot of wide open racing. There's going to be a lot of crazy stuff going on. That's why I think it's important for people to tune in tomorrow. I, you know, Belmont tomorrow is as wide open as possible. I know we've already said this to each other. It's a, it's a wild wild time to start on because there's a lot of races tomorrow that are going to be wide open and tomorrow Nick's go is going to, I think Nick's go is going to have a lead and you believe the same thing, but does Nick's go burn out? Does Nick's go burn out? That's a good question. And I think, I think it's a fair question and Hey, silver state's going to have a lot to do with it. I think this is a good, I think this is a good race to maybe, maybe, Go a six five three trifecta. Go by my standards. A good horse. Nick's go in Silver State. Those are three game horses. I think mischievous Alex. I think it falls off the pace. I think without Irad, it's a little lost. I think that's a horse that gets carried a little bit by its jockey. Agreed. I agree. I agree. So this is the race that I really was most intrigued to talk about. Because race 10, okay, let's, let's, let's dive into it. $750,000 grade one Manhattan Stakes going a mile and a quarter on the inner turf. This race is interesting to me because there's a horse in here that you and I, on the final furlong, love old, a year ago. Old friends. Old friends. Old friends. And best bets. Old friends. Best bets. And... No regrets. Not only, not only that, I love that. Not only that, but it's one of those races where you look down and you feel a sense of comfort. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. look at a name that comes up like domestic spending, which is the four horse at three to one, and you see Clarevich Stables and you see Chad Brown, and in your head you say, take my money. Take it. I'll watch it. We'll see what happens. That is the most important part to me about this this race in race 10 is that the four horse, all he does is race in big money races. That's and it. So who are you gonna who are you who are you gonna take as the reason why domestic spending loses here? Oof. What is your actual thought as to who beats him? I think tell me about it. I don't know if anybody beats domestic spending because as you see in the article, we're both pickers of number four domestic spending. You think Colonel Liam, I think Colonel Liam before I read right before I read gets hurt. Cause now we don't know, but Colonel Liam with Todd Fletcher, he's a tough horse. Goofo, 
Gufo's raced in a lot of races. He, the nine horse, he's one of those horses you can't really trust. So if you look at it, you keep diving into it, man. One of the horses is going to have to sacrifice themselves because one of the so horses is going to have to eat, is going to have to eat at four. The pace. Yeah. Because Chad, Chad Brown, he's won six times this race, five out of the last seven, this race. Yeah. And he's the trainer of domestic spending. And if he he's just putting domestics. The- if he's putting domestic spending in a race, it's for that horse to win. So it's I not, speak up on, I speak up on Colonel Liam, not to cut you off, but I speak on speak up on Colonel Liam only because his last race was the Grade One Breeders' Cup Turf Classic against Colonel Liam, and he beat him by a head or a neck, a neck. He came from fifth. If you look at the, if you look at Daily Forum's program, he came from fifth mm-hmm. and one and three quarters lengths to beat that horse by a neck. So this four horse came like a bat out of hell down the track to beat this horse. That's where I think you get the separation with Flavely and Pratt too. So yeah, Irad rode him one, two, three winners, but Flavian rode him his most recent winner. And, and, you know, when you look at a horse, there's, there's one thing that I think separates Clarevich Stables and Chad Brown on the turf, especially when you look at other horses, they don't have a, deathly turn of foot Mm -hmm. so by that meaning when they get to the top of the stretch and you see a horse gear down and go Claravich Stables Chad Brown Great Britain Ireland those horses on the grass when they get to that final furlong they go and they go hard they go fast and they go for the win and that for me was enough for domestic spending this again I, I talked about you know my best bet would have been Swiss Skydiver. Okay, so scratch my second best choice, Jackie's Warrior. If Jackie's Warrior, for whatever reason, can't race on Saturday, domestic spending is my best bet of the day. And, you know, domestic spending has already been my best bet but I, uh, in, in last year. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go back to it. But, you know, domestic spending, I, 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 I think it's the best – it's, it's the one race where I feel like we have a clear favorite. We have a clear guy that all the other horses are going to be chasing. Colonel Liam, going to be chasing. Gufo, going to be chasing. Masterpiece, going to be chasing. Rock Emperor, going to be chasing. It's domestic spending's race to win. I think that's the first time we said that about any of these races. It's the first, re- it's the first race where we're saying the horse is the horse to beat. Domestic spending, horse to beat. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. So, all right. With that being said, we're through 10 races. We are going to jump ahead real quick for everybody out there. We're going to jump ahead to the 12th and the 13th race. So race 12 allow allowance race going a mile on the turf. I got 11, three, two, six. RJ has nine, three, two, eight race 13. $94,000 $94,000 allowance optional claiming race going a mile and an eighth on the inner turf. I have one, two, six, three. RJ has 11, four, one, nine. We will talk more about races one, two, 12, and 13 tomorrow on the live Twitter feed. But for video's sake, we want to give you as much time as we can here in race 11. Race 11, RJ, 1.5 mil. Grade one, Belmont Stakes, the final jewel of the Triple Crown, going a mile and a half on one of the longest tracks in the nation. Talk to me about race 11. Well, you know, they always say they save the best for last. So thank God we're going back because last year was a little different. Belmont was first, but I like the best for last. We got Belmont last. Tomorrow, man, we got a wide open race. It's crazy. The Belmont is wide freaking open. We have horses that are, you know, almost fresh off their maidens racing tomorrow. That's crazy in a Belmont. You know, we've got a big, we've got a a, a big race tomorrow, but I think it goes to four horses, right? I think we got Rumbauer fresh off its win. 
essential quality hasn't shown great. The hot, hot rod Charlie, who I think is going to win tomorrow at the four, and Rock Your World, Joel Rosario, Japanese import, France Godina, also tough at the five. We got some horses tomorrow that are going to have to show themselves. A couple horses that, you know, a couple horses that that haven't broken through, Rumbauer aside, haven't broken through yet. Hoping tomorrow in a wide open Belmont, we you know we could get we could get a new winner, and we could get a new winner maybe at seven to two. I'm liking Flavian Pratt at the seven to two Hot Rod Charlie, and I got a prediction for you. If you want to go first, I'll tell you my prediction last. Yeah, you want me to take it? Yeah, take it, and I'll, and then I'll give you my prediction. I already told you my prediction, but it, it it's got it it's big. So, so luckily here for me. Um, you know, I know this is the big race. I had the six known agenda with Irad finishing fourth here. Um, I had this race nine, three, two, six. Um, I land on nine, three, two, six because of one reason and really, you know, one, one reason. Oh, I'm sorry. Race beforehand, four, one, two, six, four, one, two, six for race 11, not, not nine, three, two, six. I was reading ahead a little bit here. That's four one two six for RJ nine three two six for me here in the in the eleven. And for me, you know, the reason why I landed here was because I just believed in this horse. I thought that this horse had a shot. I thought it was capable, and I thought that with the current lines of everything, it really laid into its pace, its stretch, its running style. Um, the horse for me that I would say that is most dangerous is the two essential quality. I think the two essential quality is a horse that everybody is going to have to watch out for. What do you think? Well, this is the thing. I think essential quality is going to get a good break. It, it's had some tough breaks. That's the thing is that guys like essential quality, they lose in the derby, right? Even though it was the favorite and they suffer their first defeat, it's rough, but it just got bumped. You know what I mean? It's just it's stuff like that happens, and then you're a loser. And yeah, oh, we're not undefeated, you're not undefeated, you know. But this is the thing is Luis Saez is a good jockey. We know this. Essential quality is a game horse. It's gonna be there at the end. And that's the thing, is that I think that Prot does what he just did. I think he does it again. Uh, that's, that's my prediction. I think that essential quality and Rumbauer and Rock Your World, they're going to be there. They're going to be at the top three. And I think Fl Flavian Pratt not running Rumbauer, but running Hot Rod Charlie at the four, seven to two. I think he splits the middle and he wins. He stumbled. Yeah, you know, he stumbled first, last time. Yep, right? yep. He's raced essential quality. He knows the, the races. He's no bum. Winning the Louisiana Derby, almost winning the Breeders' Cup. This is a horse that's game. And I think Flavian Pratt on this horse just won. I think he wins again. I think he splits the middle, and he comes in a winner. You know, I'm going to go ahead and make a move here. I'm going to go okay. ahead and make a move on the video, and I'm going to co-sign it, if you will. My pick to win the Belmont Stakes, changing right now, taking the seven, Rock Your World. Okay, now let me tell you why. I picked Rock Your World to win the Kentucky Derby. Okay, that was a what, 14, 15, 16 horse field. Okay, I don't even remember off the top of my head. Why am I oh, picking like everybody Rock Your was World? Running there. Everybody. Why am I picking Rock Your World is because I thought Rock Your World had exactly what is needed for Belmont Stakes. Mm -hmm. This is a long race, man. This is it, there, it, there's a reason why last year there was a big deal about this being the first race because this is the toughest race, arguably, in the Triple Crown. This is the final jewel. It's the fucking big kahuna. It's whatever you want to call it. I'm taking Joel Rosario and John Sadler, just like I did 
in the first initial Kentucky Derby, and I'm taking this horse, the seven, Rock Your World, and he's going to win. He's going to win. He's going to beat your horse. He's going to beat my <laughs> He's going to beat my previous horse that I picked, and he's going to beat all of us. The seven, Rock Your World is winning right now. You made me change it. You made me think about it. You made me take it. Yeah, that's a based in fact fact for you. Right? <laughs> Dude. I'm I'm excited. We got a big we got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. I've got I'm I'm beard up. I'm liquored up. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. God willing, I wake up. I don't know. Mets play late tonight. So I'll probably be up late. But I'm going to try to get up at a good time so I get all the water in me tomorrow. I'm all hydrated. I'm ready to go because tomorrow's a big day. We got a lot of races on hand. And the Belmont, that's a big race. Tomorrow's a huge day. Tomorrow's a huge day. And for everybody that followed the base, in fact, um, final furlong article for the last year, you know, we want to just let you know that tomorrow is a huge day, which is why the video is the length that it is. You know, we give you all the content that we give you because we care. We, we try, we dive into it, and, and we truly take our time. You know, RJ and myself, we, we take pride in, in looking at this, and we take pride in horse racing, and we take pride in giving everybody winners, man. Like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't co-sign this and put our names on it if it didn't mean something to us as well. So on behalf of RJ and myself, I say thank you. I know RJ says thank you. And, uh, man, Saturday, we're here, bro. It's season two. Are you ready for this year, bro? I'm ready, man. I'm ready. I'm actually about to get ready by eating some food and drinking some beer and, and, and getting ready. I'm going to look at these horses again. But tomorrow, a lot of what, what makes me excited is a little bit of the unknown. There's going to be some winners tomorrow. We're like, we're going to be like, can you believe that? And that's what's important to us is we're going to see some jockeys show themselves tomorrow because – there's nobody skipping out. Everybody's going to be at the Belmont tomorrow. All the winners, Jose Ortiz, right? He's there. He's ready to go. Joel Bobby, Rosario. Joel Rosario. Johnny V. Johnny v. Casalano. Everybody's there tomorrow. Tyler Gaffleone. There is winners upon winners upon winners are going to be there tomorrow, and there's going to be – Horses that are going to shock you. There's going to be some great races tomorrow, man. There's going to be some wire to wire. There's going to be some races hmm, going to be decided on the final furlong, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And listen, man, catch us tomorrow on the Twitter account at the final furlong. Catch us our catch our article on um, basedinfact.com. Catch it on the Based in Fact Twitter page. We're going to be pushing all of our content this year, man. We're super excited to be with you guys. And we're super excited to get this thing rolling, man. Let's go. Tomorrow, Let's go. 11.30. We'll see you. RJ, as always, bro, love you. Thank you. Love you.